All right, power color, right, red, red devil, uh-huh, Radeon RX 580. Hey, look, it's a new video card from AMD. It just launched today. If you're watching this at the time of upload, how exciting. All right, so in particular, we're gonna be talking about the RX 580 today. Uh, however, it does fall within the RX 500 series. There are two other cards, I believe, that launched today as well, the RX 570 and RX 550. And this is very exciting stuff. Now, for those of you who are unaware, the RX 500 series is essentially a Polaris refresh. So this, this is using the same GPU as we saw in the RX 480, for example. However, there have been some minor improvements to make it a bit more appealing. Now, this is in no way something that you should upgrade to if you have an RX 480 currently. I've already run about five games comparing this to an RX 480 Strix uh, from Asus, and there's only about a 1-3% to performance bump with the Red Devil here. Uh, so it, this is really targeted or aimed at consumers or users who have had their graphics card for maybe, maybe two plus years, who are looking to upgrade, or who are maybe starting to feel the sluggish woes of their video card or their whole system, and uh, who may potentially want to jump into the foray of 1440p gaming, but are on a relatively tight budget and can't spend more than 200 150 bucks or so. MSRP of this card in particular is, is very attractive at $230 US at the time of filming. That's, that's very competitive. And that also pos positions it right in line with uh, the GTX 1060 6GB variant from good old NVIDIA. So which one should you get? I don't know. We're not going to answer that in this video, but I will give you my opinions and feedback on the RX 580 after I've used it for a bit uh, by the end of all of this. So very exciting stuff here. Actually, why am I filming the box? The card's right here. You guys thought the, the card was in the box the whole time, didn't you? Yep, I'm sneaky. Uh, but here, here's the card, very, very nice card actually. It's not too long, I like it. That's what she said. It's about seven or eight inches long, so it can still fit into some tight spaces. Oh man, I'm on a roll today. Basically, what you need to know about the 500 series is that it's it's rocking a newer generation of FinFET 14, so that's gonna lead to some better performance per watt. It's definitely a bit more power efficient than the RX 480 was. And you've also got some higher clock speeds. And AMD's kind of dialed in some higher clock speeds out of the box here. I believe this one in particular, well, since it's factory overclocked, that's also a bit higher uh, as well. So I think 1380 megahertz on the core clock is what we're rocking here with this particular variant. And that's about 3% higher than the reference clock speed of 1340 megahertz. So a nice little boost there, thanks to power color. Um, but uh, the other things I wanted to say about the 500 series, that they do support these various technologies, including the DirectX 12, or DirectX 12 and Vulkan APIs. Now, I don't know how much you guys have heard about Radeon Chill, but just to touch on it really quickly, if your character is uh, m not moving in game or standing really still, Chill will pick up on that and actually drop your FPS because you don't really need it all that much. Let's say you're camping or something. Uh, and, uh, and that basically saves a lot of power, or it saves power, and it can save a lot depending on the game uh, that you're playing. Uh, but that in turn can also lower your temperatures quite a bit. So the only downside is that there's only a few games right now that are whitelisted for this technology, um, with uh, hopefully more games to be supported in the near future. We've also got FreeSync 2. Now how awesome is FreeSync 2? I mean, not only are you attacking those lower frame rates that you weren't able to get with FreeSync 1, but it's just a, a much cheaper technology to actually get in your house. I mean, I've seen FreeSync panels go as low as like a hundred and something dollars, but you don't see that with a G-Sync supported display. It just doesn't happen. So especially if you're targeting a card like this for around 230 bucks, uh, you're probably not going to want to spend an arm and a leg on a monitor. So, I mean, hey, this is a really great option for budget gamers who still want that adaptive refresh rate. The other thing that's nice about the RX 580 over the GTX 1060 6GB variant is that it's got 8 gigs of GDDR5. So, uh, especially if you're playing at 1440p, it's nice to have that additional frame buffer, man. It does come in handy, believe it or not, and it can really drop your frame rate or your frame times uh, if you don't have enough of that VRAM. So, that's also another big perk here. So, uh, I think on that note, I'm ready to pop this guy in the test bed or in the, uh, the test build that we have here. Let's talk about that really quick. We've got a Define S from Fractal Design. Uh, they've also provided the power supply here, the Fractal Newton 600 watts. It's an old unit, had it for a few years, but it still works. We've also got a 7600K from Intel. It's a Core i5 KB Lake overclocked to 4.8 gigahertz at 1.35 volts on a uh, Hyper 212 Turbo from Cooler Master. We've got an MSI Z270 Gaming Pro Carbon for our motherboard, 16 gigs. It's a two by eight gig kit of G-Skill Trident Z3200. That's DDR4, of course, and it is operating at that rated frequency. And our boot drive right here is the RD400, a one terabyte M.2 SSD NVMe baby from good old Toshiba OCZ. Hells yeah. All right, I say we get this card locked and loaded, fire up some 1440p games and see what she's made of. Let's go.
You know what, before we jump into some games, why don't we overclock this guy and see how far we can take her? How about that? That sounds fun. Let's go ahead and max out our power limit. Temp limit's already maxed out on the slider. Uh, so again, we're operating at 1380 megahertz right here on the core clock out of the box. I'm gonna go ahead and let's see if we can do 1420. Blaze it! Okay, I know it's only been a few seconds, but I'm impatient because I'm filming a video. So I'm gonna go ahead and crank it up to 1430. 1440, come on, 1440 since we're gaming at 1440p, we have to be able to hit 1440 megahertz. It's only right. Dare I try 1450? I dare. Okay, I'm gonna call it at 1450 megahertz right here, guys. I think that's pretty good. We've got an, uh, let's see, what is that? A 70 megahertz offset from 1380 to 1450. I'm cool with that. Let's go ahead and overclock our mammaries here. I think this maxes out at 2500, if I'm not mistaken, which, oh, 2250, sorry. Uh, which I'm gonna go ahead and say yes on that. Let's see if we're in good shape, which it looks like we are. I'm not seeing any artifacting, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna just say this is a really quick overclock, quick and dirty overclock. I'm gonna say it's stable. It could very well not be, but uh, that's what I'm gonna go with for now. So let's just jump into games. If it crashes, it crashes. We'll go back to the drawing board and readjust our settings here, but I think we're good for some games. So the first game I wanna play here is Doom. 2016. Let's uh, let's go ahead and jump into the campaign, and we're gonna do. Ooh, should we do? Let's do Vulcan. Hey, let's let's just do some Vulcan here. Vulcan. All right, I gotta restart. Give me a sec. Okay, so other video settings here: 2560 by 1440. Uh, Anti-aliasing. We're doing SMAA 1TX. Overall quality ultra. I think we can do ultra. Now I'm gonna try to enlarge the frame counter in the top right corner. Uh, in post-production, so hopefully you can see it, but we're getting around 80 to 90 frames per second right now, which is pretty killer. And let's see here, uh, in the 70s, so this is always, I always look at this this artifact here, this little like thingy in the middle, because um, it usually drops the frame rate pretty nice. So you can see we're getting like 70, 80 right now. If you look at other parts of this room, we're getting 80, 90. Let's go ahead and fight some demons. My favorite thing to do in Doom. Boom. Boom. Poor place to spawn, buddy. Unwise. So we're getting around 70, 80 right now. 70 to 90 seems to be the uh, the range, which is not bad at all. It's incredibly smooth. And I, I don't have the keenest eyes either. Like, this this feels like a GTX 1080 Ti to me. Like, I, I experience no difference. Like, when, once you get above, like, 75 FPS for me, it's all it's all the same. And some of you guys might be completely different and be able to actually um, feel that sort of granular uh, difference there. But um, this feels exceptional to me. So I'm giving Doom a big fat pass uh, for the RX 580 when it comes to 1440p gaming. We were seeing again a range of 70 to 90 FPS uh, in that little section that we played, which is absolutely fantastic. Let's go ahead and try GTA 5 now. It's a little bit more difficult, I believe. We'll do 2x MSAA. I could imagine a lot of people gaming it. No, you know what? I'm gonna take MSAA off because we're at 2560 by 1440. It's really not worth the performance hit there. Everything else is on very high, which is a little unnecessary. There are a couple things we can turn down here. Um, grass does not have to be high at all. I'll say soft shadows. Um, tessellation doesn't really affect performance much in this game. Um, 25... Okay, V-Sync is off. Uh, gotta restart. BRB. So now we're here in GTA 5, of course. Uh, we're getting around 40 to 50 FPS, it looks like. The game still looks absolutely beautiful. Um, frame rates aren't nearly as high as they were in Doom, but overall... Overall tracking and or overall movement is, is, is relatively fluid. And it's not quite as fluid as Doom, obviously, but it's very playable. Do, 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 do. Oh my god. I think my overclock's too high. All right, I'm cranking this down to 1430. And let's just take the memory down to, we'll just, we'll just leave this at 2100 for now. All right. We'll, we'll see how that treats us. But that's okay that we're, we're jumping back in here and that we crashed out because uh, that sort of gives me an op another opportunity to tweak the settings a bit more and uh, see if we can squeeze a bit more performance out of this game because I'm not quite satisfied with that 40 to 50. That means in, in really taxing areas, we might even dip into the 30s, which can add a little bit of chop chop. 
to the experience, which is, is no bueno. So let's go ahead and go back to the drawing board here. All right, round two. This is uh, getting around 60 FPS right now in the high 50s, low 60s. It looks like we're about 10 FPS on average uh, higher than we were before we tweaked the settings a bit. Um, again, just a testament to how scalable this game is. And it still looks really nice, even though we've kind of now mixed the settings between very high and high. There's kind of a nice blend there. The game still looks way better than a console, which I guess doesn't say much. Um, but just looking at it, you know that this is PC grade graphics you're, that you're looking at. Um, it still looks really nice. And hitting that 60 FPS mark um, really does make a nice difference, a noticeable difference to me, than when you're sort of hovering below that. I'm gonna give GTA 5 a pass for the RX 580, 1440p. Hell yeah, just tweak some settings and you're good to go. I think uh, most people would be happy with this level of, of performance for sure, especially given the price point of this card again. Battlefield 1, here we go. This is gonna be the last game that we play today for this little test here. And I'm gonna go ahead and say, let's do let's do high. We'll, we'll do high settings first and we'll, we'll see what, what happens there. I don't think we need to change the frame rate loader. I doubt we'll be getting to the, the 200 zone, but um, let's, let's go ahead and see what we can do here. I'm just gonna fire up the uh, first level here or the opening scene, because there's quite a bit going on. Yep. Okay, looks like we're at 70, 75, mid 70s, ooh, 90s. Okay. Wow, 70s to the 90s, 70 to 90 range. I wasn't really expecting that. That's pretty good, actually. Ugh. I forgot to look at where I was going because I was looking at the frame rate counter. Um, oh, there's a grenade. Help. You guys are probably getting a better idea of how the game's performing than I am because my hands are sort of full at the moment, but look at that. Oh, we, we dipped into the 50s. Oh, why are you so slow at reloading? It's because I'm dying. I'm about to die. Help. No. 44, oh, look at that. Dips into the 40s. So interesting. Some, some, some harsh dips into the 40s there. But for the most part, we're rocking, rocking in the 70s and 80s zone. That's pretty sweet, actually. Okay, how am I not dead yet? If this was a real battle, I would have died five, like, ten lifetimes. Is that my guy? Sorry, guy, if that was you. No, I don't think it was. Okay, I should I should die now. I should, there we go. Okay. I think we have a little bit more headroom here, so I say we crank it up to ultra. See what happens. And looks like we're in the 60s, 60, 70s. Still pretty good, actually. Wow. Not bad, yo. Let's see if we can get it to drop into the 30s. If there's like a big explosion. If there's a big explosion, I'll run into it. Which is never advised in a real life situation, but... Oh my gosh, there's so many people. Oh, wait, hey, whoa. Uh, we dropped into the 50s right there. Oh boy. Yep, we're in the 50s. We're in the 50s now. What the hell's going on? I can't see anything. Oh, dropped into the 40s. Okay. Well, that's a that's a pass for me. Battlefield 1 can definitely handle 1440p with the RX 580. Granted, this is overclocked, but I'm pretty sure you can do it right out of the box as well. Well, hey, that was super fun. And uh, I did have GPU-Z running the whole time. So 1450 megahertz was the highest core clock we hit, although that was with the uh, unstable overclock that I had set. So really you're looking at 1430 megahertz, which still isn't bad. And 75 degrees Celsius is the hottest our Red Devil got up to. It's, it could be better, but it's it's not bad. It's definitely not bad. Well, well below 80 degrees is always nice. And it looks like we were consistently at 100% GPU load, which means we weren't bottlenecked by our 7600K in any way. So what are my overall thoughts on the RX 580? Well, so far my thoughts have been overwhelmingly positive because in the hour and a half that I was gaming with this card while making this video, I was really surprised and, and quite frankly impressed with the frame rates that it was able to pull off. For 230 bucks, this is a better value than the Asus uh, Strix RX 480 that I was testing with it earlier. Um, it outperforms that card, it has better power efficiency, and it supports the latest technologies from AMD. Um, altogether, making it a really nice package for uh, budget gamers who still want 
to branch outside of the realm of 1080p gaming. For 1440p gamers, I mean, this really puts 1440 uh, within the realm, within reach of a lot of gamers who don't have a thousand plus bucks to spend on a full system. I'd say you could probably get away with a seven to eight hundred dollar build and still play 1440p games um, over 60 FPS with, with the use of this card. Not the Red Devil per se. And by the way, this is not like a, a, a green light on the Red Devil variant of the RX 580. I'm just talking about the 580. I have not done a full review of the Power Color Red Devil, so in no way am I recommending this variant yet. Um, so we're just talking about the 580 here, but it's overall a very, a very solid, very solid GPU. And honestly, again, if you have an RX 480, do not upgrade to the 580. It's not, it just doesn't make sense. However, if you were considering the 480, then get this instead. It's, it's a much better buy in my opinion. Um, again, I would still need to test this also against the GTX 1060 6 gig variant from NVIDIA. And it'd be interesting to see how this stacks up against those cards with the newer, uh, the faster memory clocks um, that have just been announced not too long ago. So overall, GG AMD, keep on keeping on and pumping out good hardware as you have been lately. And I uh, can't wait for Vega. Vega's the next big thing. That's gonna be a different architecture. That's super exciting and uh, is probably gonna more, more so compete with Nvidia's higher end cards. So that should be uh, really fun to test out when it comes around. But that's gonna do it for now, guys. That's what I think about the RX 4 580. And I'm really happy that it does pull off 1440p gaming very well. But you guys let me know what you think in the comments below. Also feel free to toss me a like on this video if you enjoyed it. It does help me a lot. Also before you go, you can head over to my store where I'm selling shirts and other goodies, or you can check out Bitwit Ultra, my early access ad-free channel. The first two weeks are completely free, and if you decide to stay on, it's only $1.50 a month. So you can go ahead and check that out when you've got some time. But that's gonna do it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. As always, have a great day, and I'll see you guys in the next one.